What's up, guys? Welcome to Daily Dose of Reddit. This is your host, who's wondering, How you doing? Zach, and today's subreddit is r slash tales from retail. This story's called, I didn't read the whole coupon, but... Uh, this story is about the same lady I had an issue with when she ordered some pants online to pick them up in the store. She promised she wouldn't return, but quickly came back. This happened the day after Black Friday. Reminder, I am a merchandising manager at a department store. Here's the cast. There's me, customer, associate. Okay, so for Black Friday and Saturday, our company put out an early bird coupon that expires at 1 p.m. Now, at 1 p.m., the line was still long, so the general manager extended that coupon until the line died, which was around 4 p.m. That's an extra three hours that customers had to use the expired coupon. It is now 7 p.m. The line is fairly long, so an associate and I went up to the registers to help the cashiers. As I'm ringing up, I notice the customer I had an issue with last time next in line. The associate calls her up. Everything is normal until I hear this exchange. All right, your total is 43.64. I have this coupon with me. Uh, I'm sorry, ma'am, but that coupon expired at 1 p.m. No, it doesn't. Where does it say that? He points to the big, bold red until 1 p.m. letters. Right there, ma'am. Oh, well, I didn't see that. I'm sorry about that. Well, your total is 4364. So, how would you like to pay? Isn't there anything you can do about the coupon? I'm sorry, ma'am, but we actually extended the coupon for an additional three hours after it expired. It is now six hours past, so unfortunately, I can't take the coupon. Would you like to talk to the manager? He's right behind me. Customer sees me and, I think, recognizes me. Ah, no, whatever, I'll just use my card. About an hour later. Hey, OP, there's a customer wanting to talk to you on the phone. She's online too. All right. Thanks for holding. This is OP speaking. How can I help you? Hi. Okay, so your cashier didn't want to accept my coupon earlier today. Here's what happened. I came into your store at around 11 a.m. today to do some shopping. But the line was wrapped around the whole store and I had my dog with me. So I left to drop him off. Then I came back at 1 p.m. and the line was still too long, so I left. Then I go at 6 after the line has died down a little and I didn't see that the coupon expired at 1. I see. So what exactly is your question? Well, can you do anything about it? I spend a lot of money there. Well, uh, we extended that coupon an extra three hours until the line died. Unfortunately, we also received an email from corporates about the recent increase in coupon abuse, and because we already extended the coupon, we can't honor it. Side note, that actually wasn't a lie. We really did receive that email, and people at other locations were actually getting terminated over it. I'm one of your best customers. You should do this for me. I'm sorry, ma'am, but like I said, because of the three-hour extension, we cannot. Ah, uh, whatever. I'll call tomorrow and try a different manager. The phone clicked. I think in my head. Good luck with that. The assistant manager tomorrow is far less likely to do anything about it than me. Here I got a little rhyme for this one. Oh, that customer thought she was slick. When in fact, she's got the head of a... This story's called, What's the best way to deal with missing change? Call the cops on the cashier. I wanted to keep this short, but it's a long story, so strap in. Keep in mind, this was about six years ago. At the time, I was the assistant manager at a discount shoe store. Okay, so I'm working checkout, and a woman comes up talking on her phone. I asked her the standard checkout questions and told her her total. This happened years ago, but I think the total was roughly $22. She handed me $40 cash, and I handed her the change, $18. She took her stuff and left and never hung up the phone and never counted her change. She went shopping at a big box superstore that was located next door. There, she spent the change I gave her. Then she came back to my store and accused me of screwing up her change. 
She kept holding her receipts up and adding them together and kept repeating she's $5 short. At least this time she wasn't on her phone while talking to me. Keep in mind, she did not count her change. She shoved the cash in her purse and left the store and spent more money somewhere else. The money could have fallen out of her purse on the walk over to the superstore, or the other cashier could have screwed up. There are a lot of variables to the solution. After she talked to me like an idiot, I maintained my cool and advised her that we will figure it out. I reminded her to be patient. I called our store's customer service center to see what they would advise us to do in the situation. The thing is, this was a small store and only had one register. According to the corporate representative I spoke with, I needed to take the customer's information and close the register at the end of the night as usual because we could not close a register during business hours. If the cash count was over by $5, then I did screw up the change and we would call her in the morning to come and pick up her money. Well, according to this woman, I was stealing from her if I didn't give her the $5. I repeated that this is the corporate policy and I had no control. So she did what any good Karen would do and called the cops. At this point, she sat in the corner and was making more phone calls, swearing about her thief of a cashier. All the while, I had to keep checking out customers. Gotta love being short-staffed. So, the cops show up and she rambles on about how I stole her $5, and she is just waving her receipts around like that is concrete evidence. The cop looks her right in the eye and says in a matter-of-fact tone, Why didn't you count your change? This obviously wasn't what she wanted to hear. She wanted me to leave there in handcuffs. By this point, tears are streaming down my face and the cop comes to talk to me. I told him what corporate said and he told me to follow their direction. He took the basic information he needed and left. But he was on my side and gave his contact info. The woman reluctantly gave me her information to call her in the morning and the cop and her left the store. So, we closed the store that night, and I count the cash at least 10 times, and guess what? We were $20 short. Another issue is, we had an employee who we suspected of stealing, and every shift she worked, exactly $20 went missing. Like I said, there are a lot of variables here. Since $20 was missing, I knew I had indeed given her the correct change. This Karen was going to have to suck up the fact that she lost her own money. But I wanted my manager to recount the cash and be the one to call her the next morning. Like she would have believed me anyways. She took the news badly and made a corporate complaint. Luckily, we had calls and police documents to back everything up. There were no ramifications for me. It was an awful, stressful night. But hey, at least I got a good story out of it. Yes, you did. It's actually amazing how easily you could ruin someone's day. Like that idiot of a woman made this person cry at work because she lost her own money. Or she, maybe she didn't, I don't know. For all we know, she could have went around the corner as soon as she left and blew the $5 on what she thought was a really good deal on cocaine, but in fact it was just drywall. This story's called, No, You Can't Have Your Money Back. At my store, we occasionally get people trying to get their money back for free, when they have very clearly purchased a perfectly good product. So one of the girls I work with, Workmate, worked a Sunday shift where a customer purchased around $90 worth of stock, which is a relatively large spend for our store. Our average sale is around $30, as we get a lot of kids. Anyway, Workmates remembered that customer because she spent a lot and was the only person that day to use an American Express card that day instead of EFTPOS and Visa. The next day, I was working with Workmates and we got a phone call from customer claiming that she had been double charged for her $90 purchase the previous day, which Workmates immediately thought was fishy because there's literally no way that could happen on our system unless the entire transaction was put through twice, and the person paid twice. Giving her the benefit of the doubt, Workmate calmly said, Yep, come back in with your receipt and we can refund you. But customer was having none of it. She claimed that she lived out of the city and wasn't planning on coming back in for a while. 
So couldn't we just refund her over the phone? Our system only allows for refunds in person, and we have to have proof of purchase to give someone their money back, logically. So Workmate explained that to customer, who then asked if she could get the refund over email. Workmate, again, said that we literally can't do that. Besides not having proof of purchase, we are physically unable to reimburse money in that fashion. Customer had a huge angry rant at Workmate, who just mm-hmm and sorried until customer hung up. She then turned to me and explained what happened. We looked up the transaction from yesterday and found a digital copy of her receipt as well as a transcript of every transaction from that day, so we could pinpoint when she came in and what she got. Shockingly, there was no evidence of a double charge. When Workmates was away on break, I got a phone call from customer's friend. Friend angrily told me that customer had been double charged and she was told she would have to come back in to get a refund and she's not planning on visiting city. Is there nothing else you can do? I calmly told her that we aren't able to process refunds digitally or over the phone. I also explained that we looked up the purchase and had absolutely no record of a double charge, which we can show her when she comes in. Unfortunately, because we have no evidence of an overcharge on our end, I told her that we would need both a receipt and a bank statement to show us that her card had been charged twice from our company on the same day. If they could do that, we could happily refund. If not, they would likely have to contact the bank as the error seems to be between them and the bank and not our system. Friend grumpily said thanks and hung up. We never heard from them again. Ironically, Workmate served customer again the next day and customer didn't say a word about the matter. If you've worked retail, you'll know that one of the most satisfying things in the world is very politely explaining exactly why someone is wrong. And they can't get mad at you because you're both right and civil. Oh, buddy, you obviously have not looked very far on the internet because literally like 95% of the stories I read on this channel say the exact opposite. This happened a while ago, but I am still feeling the consequences now. This particular flip up is spread across many years and it may seem like background info, but is actually portraying a pattern of my failures as a mentor. It's quite a story, however, I have to admit. Me and my father, uh, my mom had put me up for adoption when I was young. He wasn't my biological father, but he was the best dad ever. And a couple of friends were vacationing out of our home country. We had rented a car and were in a remote desert town and it broke down. We needed a parts and we went to the local market hoping to find a replacement. The owner, however, was very stingy and refused our payment, but his employee was helpful and nice. He was very young, probably about nine. The child labor laws were very different from what I was used to, but he did his best. Eventually, he had convinced his manager to listen to us. After a very long and trying period of haggling and deal making, we got our part. But my father was torn at the fact of leaving this young man behind to work hard hours and be paid very little. We were extremely religious and this impacted our decision. We consulted his mother. His dad had never been around and she told us he was extremely gifted and that he could grow up to have great success if he could get out of the country. We had suspected this, but she confirmed it. She wanted him out of there, so she said her goodbyes and I gained a new brother. A couple weeks after, my father was involved in a freak accident and tragically and suddenly passed away. He told me in his last moments to raise my brother and that he had total faith in me. I was scared that I would let him down, but I eventually put this behind me. Years passed. He had grown into one of the most blessed and well-known men in our religion. Gonna keep which one a secret for privacy reasons. And he knew it. He was still a good guy at heart, but I could tell he was getting a little too prideful. We were closer than ever at this time. We were with each other at all times. We never fought, and I loved him very much. There was a time where, for some reason, it seemed like everyone was against us. We had messy dealings 
we had people try and kill us because of our faith, and lots of friendships were made and lost, one of which being a very influential political figure who we trusted very much. As I later found out, my brother and her hooked up quite often and eventually got married without my knowledge. There are rules in our religion that forbid this, but he ignored them. I was blind to the path he was walking on. He eventually started becoming friendly with the man who slowly and quietly tried to make him join his cult. Oh my god, I knew it. I knew it. This guy's telling us the plot to the prequels. Star Wars. Anyways, let's keep going. This cult was evil and only sought to kill people of our faith. This person told him that he would become very powerful if he embraced their beliefs. More powerful than anyone he had ever met before. But this would mean he would have to abandon everyone he loved, except for his wife. He was told that his wife was dying and that this cult could save her. He fell fast and hard. And after that, me and everyone who had helped him become so faithful became his sworn enemies. Eventually, him and the leader of this cult decided they wanted to finish us once and for all. They burned down all our meeting places and all but three people survived. Me, the leader of our faith, and his right-hand man. He ran. He took his wife, who was pregnant with twins and who had told me his whereabouts, and started rambling about grandiose plans to become important and powerful. I walked in on him physically assaulting her. I tried to reason with him, but he was too far gone. It came to blows, and because both of us had extensive fighting training, the fight was long and hard. He was wounded very bad, but he survived. I have decided to live my life watching after his kids, who thankfully survived and hope that I do better leading them in our faith. I failed my brother, and now he is brutally injured and is sworn to kill me and his children. I didn't prepare enough, and now my consequences have arrived. If you are reading this, brother, I have something to say. I have failed you, Anakin. I have failed you! You allowed this Dark Lord to twist your mind, and you became the very thing you swore to destroy. You were the chosen one. It was said you would destroy the Sith, not join them. Bring balance to the Force, not leave it in darkness. You were my brother, Anakin. I loved you. Okay, guys, I tried with that last bit, but I'm no Ewan McGregor, so... Um, you get what you get. And I did not know this was gonna be a Star Wars story, okay? I don't read most of the stories before, um, you know, I record them. So when I got up to that, um the whole thing with him hooking up with the politician, I was like, wait a second, wait a second. Now, let me know in the comments below, honestly, how long it took for you to figure out this was the story of Anakin. <laughs> Don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit that bell to never miss an episode.